In this lesson, I'm going to teach you about three exponent rules, the product rule, quotient rule, and power of a power rule. Let's start with part one, where I teach you the product of powers rule. So we'll start by considering this product of two powers, a to the power of five times a to the power of three. We'll write it in expanded form and then simplify to a single power. And that's going to allow us to come up with the product of powers rule. So looking closely at that product of powers, I have a to the power of 5, which means 5 factors of a being multiplied together. And those 5 factors of a are going to be multiplied by a to the power of 3, which means 3 more factors of a. In this expanded form, I can see that I have repeated multiplication by a. And how many factors of a do I have? Well, I have 5 plus 3, so 8 factors of a in total, which means I could rewrite this repeated multiplication as a single power. It could be a to the power of 8. So to come up with a general rule for a product of powers, if you're multiplying powers that have the same base, so in this case the base was a, we kept that same base of a, but then added the exponents. 5 plus 3 is 8. That tells us in total how many factors of a there were. So in the box below here, the general rule it says notice that when multiplying powers with the same base, we keep the same base and add the exponents. And then to write the general product of powers rule, I would have to show two powers with the same base being multiplied together. So for example, a to the power of m being multiplied by a to the power of n would be equal to, we keep that same base of a, but add the exponents m plus n. And now let's do example one, where we practice applying that new rule. Example one says to simplify by writing as a single power and then evaluate if possible. Starting with part A, because I have two powers with the same base, right? The bases are both two, and they're being multiplied. I can use my product of powers rule to simplify into a single power by keeping that same base of two and then adding the exponents three plus four, which means this is equal to two to the power of seven, which is 128. And then moving on to part B, I have two powers of negative three being multiplied together. So to write as a single power, I can keep that base of negative 3 and then add their exponents. And I don't see an exponent on the first power of negative 3, so there's an exponent of 1. So the new exponent is 1 plus 3, which means as a single power, this is negative 3 to the power of 4. And then evaluating this, 4 factors of negative 3 being multiplied together is positive 81. Now let's do one more example of this product of powers. Part C, we have two powers of x being multiplied together. So to write as a single power, I keep the base of x and add the two exponents, 12 plus 5, which makes this equal to x to the power of 17. And I can't evaluate this because our variable x is unknown. And now let's move on to the second part of this lesson, where I teach you about the quotient of powers rule. In this section, we'll start by considering this quotient, a to the power of 5 divided by a to the power of 3. We'll write it in expanded form and then simplify it to a single power. So looking closely at this quotient, I have a to the power of 5, which means 5 factors of a, being divided by a to the power of 3, which means 3 factors of a being multiplied together. And then in this quotient, notice what we have. I have a factor of a being divided by a factor of a. Anything divided by itself is 1, so I could cancel out that pair of factors. And then I could cancel out another pair of a's, and then a third pair of a's would cancel, leaving me with, in the numerator, just two factors of a being multiplied together, which I could write as a single power as just a to the power of 2. So notice, to get from the original quotient to the simplified single power, I once again kept that base of a the same, but subtracted the exponents, 5 minus 3 is equal to 2. So in the box below, let's fill out the general rule for the quotient of powers. It says notice that when dividing powers with the same base, we keep the same base and subtract the exponents. So to show a general rule, I need to show two powers with the same base being divided. So for example, a to the power of m being divided by a to the power of n. And that would be equal to, I keep that same base of a, but subtract the exponents m minus n. And because division by zero is undefined, 
I should also mention that a cannot be zero for this rule to work because if a was zero, we would be dividing by zero. So I'll state that restriction. But as long as a is any real number not zero, this rule does apply. So let's go ahead and practice using this rule in example two. It says to simplify again by writing as a single power first and then evaluate if possible. So looking at part A, I have two powers of eight being divided. So I keep that base of eight and then subtract the exponents seven minus five, which makes this equal to eight to the power of two as a single power and eight squared just means eight times eight, which is 64. Now to part B, I have two powers of negative four being divided. So I'll keep that base of negative four and then subtract the exponents, four minus three, which means as a single power, this is equal to negative four to the power of one, which means we just have one factor of negative four, which is just negative four. And now moving on to part C, I have two powers of X being divided. So as a single power, I keep that base of X and subtract the exponents 10 minus five which means this is equal to x to the power of five. And we can't evaluate that because our variable x is unknown. And now let's move on to part D, where we're actually going to discover a new exponent rule. First of all, you might notice here that what we have is five squared divided by five squared. It's something divided by itself, right? This is really just 25 divided by 25. And how many times does 25 go into 25? Well, one time, something divided by itself is one. But if we were to use the quotient rule of powers, instead of using that logic, the quotient rule of powers would tell me that I could rewrite this as a single power by keeping that base of five and subtracting the exponents two minus two, which means this equals five to the power of zero as a single power. But because it's something divided by itself, right, it's 25 divided by 25, I know this has to equal one. So five to the power of zero must equal one. And in fact, any non-zero value to the power of zero is going to equal one. And we'll summarize that in this table below. It says, notice five squared over five squared is 25 over 25, which is one, but also five squared over five squared is equal to five to the zero. So five to the zero must be equal to one. And that leads us to the zero exponent rule, which says a to the power of zero is equal to one, as long as a does not equal zero because zero to the power of zero is undefined any other real number to the power of zero is equal to one. And then the last rule I want to show you in this lesson is the power of a power rule. So consider this power of a power where we have a squared to the power of three. We're going to write it in expanded form and then simplify into a single power. So looking carefully at a squared to the power of three, what that means is that we have three factors of a squared being multiplied together. And a squared is two factors of a, so I can change each of those a squareds to a times a. So in total, I have six factors of a being multiplied together. So as a single power, I can write this as a to the power of six. So notice what happened here. If we had a to the power of two to the power of three, we kept that base of a, and we multiplied the exponents. Two times three is six. So the general rule will fill out down here in this box. It says when you have a power of a power, you can keep the base, and multiply the exponents. So the power of a power rule would be if we have a to the power of m raised to the power of n, that would be equal to keep the base of a and multiply the exponents m times n. So let's see if we can use that rule to simplify and evaluate the powers in example three. Three a, I have three squared to the power of four. So I can keep that base of three and multiply the exponents two times four, making this equal to three to the power of eight. And eight factors of three being multiplied together is 6,561. Part B, I have a power of a power, so I can keep the base of negative two and multiply the exponents three times four, making this equal to, as a single power, negative two to the power of 12. And 12 factors of negative two being multiplied together is 4,096. And then last one, part C, I once again have a power of a power, so I keep that base of x and multiply the exponents five times seven, which makes this equal to x to the power of 35. And I can't evaluate that because our variable x is unknown. 
So let's summarize all of these rules that we know into a chart. In this chart are all of the exponent rules you should know by this part of the unit. The product of power rule states, if we're multiplying powers with the same base, so a to the m times a to the n, that's equal to, we keep the same base and add the exponents, m plus n. But the quotient of powers rule, when dividing powers with the same base, so a to the m divided by a to the n, we keep that base of a, but subtract the exponents m minus n. And remember, there's a restriction on that because division by zero is undefined. We don't want to divide by zero, so a cannot be zero. The power of a power rule, so if we have a power, let's say a to the power of m, raised to another exponent, let's say n, that's equal to a to the power of m times n. And the zero exponent rule that we came up with was that any real number, let's say a, to the power of zero is equal to one, as long as a is not zero, because zero to the power of zero is undefined. And then in the last lesson, I introduced you to the negative exponent rule, which we'll revisit later in the unit, but I want to summarize that in the table here as well. If I had a to the power of negative m, that's equal to the reciprocal of that power raised to a positive exponent. So it would be equal to 1 over a to the power of positive m. And once again, because division by 0 is undefined, that a cannot be 0. And now let's see if we can use these rules to simplify a few different operations between powers. Example 4 says simplify each expression and evaluate if possible. And there are four that we're going to do. Let's start with a. Following the correct order of operations, I need to simplify within brackets first, so I should do 3 squared times 3 to the 4. Well, to simplify that product of powers, I know I keep the same base and add their exponents, 2 plus 4. And 2 plus 4 is 6. And now in the numerator, I have a power of a power, so I can keep that base of 3 and multiply the exponents 6 times 3, which is 18. And in the denominator, I have two powers of 3 being multiplied together, so I can keep that base of 3 and add the exponents 7 plus 5, which is equal to 3 to the power of 12. And now we have two powers of 3 being divided, so I can keep the base of 3 and subtract the exponents 18 minus 12, which is 6. And 6 factors of 3 being multiplied together is 729. Now let's go to part B. In the numerator, I have a power of a power. So I can keep the base of x and multiply the exponents 5 times 4, which is 20. And now in the denominator, I'll leave the x to the power of 5. But this power of a power, x squared to the power of 3, I can keep that x and multiply the exponents 2 times 3, which is x to the 6. And then in the denominator, I have two powers of x being multiplied together. So I can keep the base and add the exponents, 5 plus 6, which is 11. And lastly, I now have two powers of x being divided. So I can keep the base of x and subtract the exponents, 20 minus 11, which gives me a final answer of x to the power of 9. Two more examples left to do. Let's go down to c. And I have a note on the side here which explains what we're going to do for this question. It says when multiplying or dividing monomials, right, we have two monomials here being multiplied together, we multiply and divide the coefficients first and then apply appropriate exponent laws to the variables. So for part C, I need to multiply these constant factors, the coefficients of 5 and 2 first. So maybe I'll rewrite this product as 5 times 2 times x squared times x to the 7. And this makes it more obvious that that 5 and 2 can be multiplied together to make 10. And then with the variables, I have two powers of x being multiplied, so I can keep the base of x and add their exponents, 2 plus 7, which gives me 10x to the power of 9. And then the last example, part d. In the numerator, once again, I have these two constant factors, 3 times 4, which were being multiplied together. So that would equal 12. And then look for powers that have the same base that are being multiplied or divided. Well, in the numerator, I have k to the power of 1 times k to the power of 4. So that would equal k to the power of 1 plus 4, which is k to the power of 5. And then I also have two powers of m being multiplied. Keep that base of m and add their exponents. 4 plus 4 is 8. And this is over the denominator. And now I can do the divisions. I can divide these constant factors. 12 divided by 4 is equal to 3. And then looking for powers that have the same base, I have a k to the 5 divided by k to the 5. 
based on the quotient rule, that would be k to the power of 5 minus 5, which is k to the power of 0. And then dividing the powers of m, I keep the base of m, subtract their exponents, 8 minus 5 is 3. Then to fully simplify this, k to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So I have 3 times 1 times m cubed, which is just a final answer of 3m cubed. So that's the end of this lesson where we learned and practiced a bunch of exponent rules. Make sure you go to jensenmath.ca and get a copy of the practice questions that go along with this lesson. Jensen